In this week's episode of the Experimental Aircraft Channel, we'll give you a quick walkthrough of the most searched helicopter on the internet, the Mosquito Helicopter, built by Composite FX in Trenton, Florida. John Updegrove uh, came up with this machine and it's known as the Mosquito Air. And so this was kind of a recapturing of the Hiller machine with a little bit more modern flair to it. And John Updegrove uh, was building, had built several of these when Dwight and George contacted him. And they came to an understanding that uh, Mr. Updegrove would provide a similar drive line uh, for the XE machines. And so what you have here is uh, a good example of one of the early airs. Now, this is a, it's a remarkable open air version of what you can have uh, of flying a helicopter. When you're flying, you see almost none of the machine. Uh, and so uh, it's quite an experience. However, it's not necessarily the best beginner machine. Uh, since it's on a tripod in order to stay light, um, beginner hovering and landing skills can be challenged by a tripod design uh, because it can be prone to tipping uh, or catching. Uh, as you lift the machine off the ground, you can catch on a feature on the ground a little more easily uh, with this tripod configuration. Okay. Yeah, so how many different types of uh, fabrics do you use and where do you use there's them? About, well, there's about six different types of fabric uh, that we use and uh, we use them in different pla the places that require different uh, uh, structural characteristics. And so, um, so where what, most so what do you have here? What most people think of uh, fiberglass as a, a mat like this and this for us is just filler material. Okay. Uh, and that's compared to any of these engineered woven materials that we're using um, for different parts uh, of the machine. So the radiator shroud and these, this is the beginning of the fuel tank or tail boom? Those are fuel tanks that you're looking at right there. And you're looking at a keel box is uh, where some of the control mechanisms are A, a keel on. box, not a kill box. Yeah, keel, K-E-E-L box. Okay. Uh, and then the back of a seat that was just popped. And this is an untrimmed part that comes off of this tool, but this is a radiator shroud. 254, yeah. And uh, so, so even for helicopters, Ultralight is ultralight, it's 254 pounds, just like fixed wing. Yes, uh, yeah. However, we don't make a 254 pound limit. Um, our machine is heavier, how, but when we add the float allowance for the machine, um, we get up to 300 and 314 pounds and we come just under it. So with the float allowance, um, we have the ability to still qualify as ultralight. Okay. And here Josh is laying up with some mat material just laying up one of these uh, reinforcement structures. After that cures and all of the components are in it, we split the mold. And as we split the mold, this is what comes out of it. Okay. Uh, this is kind of unmolested uh, after that. You can see we have some flash uh, at areas where the mold shuts. Um, so it comes out with the, this gel coat already. It comes out with the gel coat yeah. already on it. And, um, uh, and then this now will be, uh, there's a couple little hand things that we need to do to it. And then we'll put it on our fuselage fixture here shortly. At this stage, the fuselage is not finished because there's no uh, upper uh, reduction mount uh, assembly uh, adhered to it, nor is there a fuel tank, okay. uh, nor is there a VIN associated with this machine just yet.
earlier in uh, the laminate shop, we were talking about radiator shrouds. And okay. you saw the tool for it, you saw the rough part, and this is what a finished part looks like, or at least a finished trimmed part. Later on in the process, you will see what one of these looks like painted on the machine. Uh, and in the stock room where we are right now, we've got the equipment for roughly 10 machines uh, at any given time. Uh, there's, uh, on a typical build, there's over 1,800 components in the machine. Uh, and in that number, the engine just counts as one of them, the, the engine assembly. But we have, uh, for instance, clutch assemblies that are here um, unbuilt, uh, as well as all of the components to build clutch assemblies finally ending up as finish clutch assemblies where we have friction pads and springs and uh, all the gearing and everything on them. So we've got uh, uh, a significant lead time in order to produce machines and the more sub-assemblies we have in here and the more parts we have in here it's easier to get the kits out faster and these days we've been particularly busy so it's always a struggle to keep stuff in stock. I can point this out in the machine when it comes to it. However, this is what the operator is flying. Uh, you're seeing this in a configuration such that you might not be familiar with it. It's on its ear, but this is our final pulley. And just underneath it, through our control structure, is our swash plate. And mixer assembly being down here, and this is what the operator is really flying. They're flying the swash plate. The swash plate is flying the rest of the machine. And one of the first reactions is, isn't it cute? Look how small that swash plate is. It is, is decidedly small, but that's all that this machine needs. And uh, we'll walk into a machine and I'll kind of point your camera up to where it is. Uh, this is tucked away in the backbone of the machine. Okay. Yeah, it's, it does amaze me. <laughs> hey guys, one second. Hey guys, you've probably seen me traveling a whole lot these days. What makes all this possible, getting this original aviation content, is sponsors like these. Dynon Avionics at DynonAvionics.com AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com Airworks at AirWorksAviation.com Avination at avnationusa.com. Check the description below for links to these great companies. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. If you like these videos that we are producing weekly, Give that like button a click and engage all notifications so you don't miss a single episode. Our machine is a conventional helicopter and where we have a cyclic and a collective and uh, our typical foot pedal controls are cable controlled. Uh, taking off, we want to give the way our rotor spins, we want to give a little left pedal uh, when you're picking up at first. But I want to show you the mixer assembly on how these two instruments are coordinated for the head. Um, this happens to be a piston engine that we're working on, or that we're looking at. And this throttle assembly has a correlator on our machine, so when you pull collective, it adds a little bit of throttle, and you let go of collective, it, 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 uh, it also takes away a little bit of throttle. This machine has an option of a military grip where you can control radio and other functions with, uh, uh, with the grip. And behind the curtain here is where you can see some mixing assembly. The, the mixer is down here. One, one and second. so if I move... One second, let me get focus right. We got it. Go ahead. If you move, as I move my cyclic around, you can see I'm moving it roughly in a round direction. And you can see that it's inputting into the tubes just the cyclic. It's moving my input tubes up to the swash plate. And if you look up at the swash plate, which is up here, you can see roughly that's the same thing that I'm doing with the cyclic. Right, okay, mo so moving it around. So now, it's mirroring that. It is, mir it is mirroring it. Now at the same rate, I can also pull, pull collective and, and drop collective. And so all of that, there's five degrees of freedom here that are combined in the three 
mixed tubes that go up to the head. It's pretty neat. It's good to show that. Right. So, and it's the fact that this is. Some people say, "Well, this isn't a real helicopter." There's nothing about this helicopter that isn't real. It's conventional, cyclic, and collective. Uh, Zanzarata, or the MZ202. Uh, this is a 600cc air-cooled carbureted engine uh, that takes mixed gas in the fuel tank uh, and it makes uh, 55 horsepower at the crank and that 55 horsepower uh, is plenty of power for our maximum 240 pound operator. Okay. In contrast to the other machine, up top, these belts will spin, or this head will spin at 540 RPM at 100%, as compared to 590 for the heavier machines. Is this a, a factory built here, or is this a customer? Yeah, this is, a, this is an ultralight that uh, we're doing as a ready-to-fly machine. And it's not quite ready. We still have a little, couple little piece parts here and there. Uh, but in the, U in the U.S., we can do the ultralight model. We can do ready to fly, uh, built at the factory. The Cadillac that we have, the XET, um, conventionally we just run Jet A. Some people will do a little bit of a kerosene mix or something along those lines that can cool some components down, but Jet A is uh, convention and uh, the, it's the uh, BTU per pound that we're used to for the performance of the machine. And uh, so Jet A is, it's also rather readily available. Yeah. Sometimes you have to go somewhere to get it, but it's available in lots of places. And if you really like and are passionate about vertical flight, check out the link below for this video we did on the opener black fly, or look on our channel for popular uploads. Well, if you've made it this far, you must really love helicopters. So let me invite you to subscribe right now for more original aviation content. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Remember to check out experimentalaircraftchannel.com. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.